All right, we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome. <laughs> oh, one of my lights is off. Welcome, Mike Smith. Today, we're going to be talking about video games. That's a true fan. 527, he commented. That's like as soon as the fucking <laughs> the post was live. Yeah. Yeah. Like instantly. Dude, I love was waiting. It. I love it. He was feeding uh, because we missed last week. Yeah. That, that was that was my fault. I had some just some literal last minute shit come up and I just couldn't, couldn't get out of it. Like I was trying. Sometimes uh, 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 life uh, gets in the way. <laughs> yes yes youtube i know there's somebody live on my channel it's me what i know I, I tell you i get like i got like six or seven notifications it's nuts and what's funny is like i moved my i moved my chair a minute ago and i thought i no okay i thought i ran over one of my knives i was like well i was like not my expensive that's nice <laughs> why is your knife on the floor because i haven't put them away <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like, like, I mean, it's 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 bad, but it's not bad. It's because I was looking for something the other day, and like, hold on, let me see if I can. Oh, I can. Mike Smith called you out in the chat. There's my whole thing right there. Just all nice. my knives. Never heard of David Letterman having problems. Well, I also have way more hair than him. Woo. Hey, Gibby, welcome. Yeah, uh, I, that's that's all my. I get kisses from from Gibby. That's fine. Yeah. I get to molest them. Yeah, no, that's all. That's all. My, that's, that's all my knives on the floor. My really expensive ones are on the on the fringe, and I was just like, "Did I just run over the goddamn kydex for my really expensive knives?" Like, goddamn it, are you serious? <laughs> oh, oh, that worried the shit out of me. Um. Anyways. Anyways. Sorry, I really want to. I just really want to make sure I didn't run over them. Hold on. Jeez. <laughs> if like his knives are that fragile, why are they so expensive? How's it looking? No, they're fine. They're fine. They're fine. Oh, okay. They're fine. Can we move on? I ran. I ran over one of the. Ran over one of the cloth ones. <laughs> <laughs> I was really worried, dude. <laughs> like you, you, you've seen my, you've seen my knives. You like specifically like this, like these, the bokers. Oh yeah, the ones that are, look like you know they're painted with diarrhea. Uh yeah, yeah, the baby poop spectrum. The, yeah, if you guys want to see, if you guys want to see my my little my little prize collection of bokers. You should make an Instagram post about them. God, I have so many knives. Oh, I was, I already got a message about somebody asking about my room, that it was a Japanese hotel room or whatever you said the other show. <laughs> I had people, like, I had two or three people message me like, what, what's, what's your, what's your room look like? Because now, now everybody's like, what, what's, what's going on here? It looks like a Japanese hotel room. <laughs> it's very zen. It is zen. It is zen as fuck. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised I'm like, you don't have like little waterfalls and stuff in it. Oh God, no! I have to pee all the time. Just don't go pee in your dream. You'll be fine. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> I would wank grave while dead. I ain't dead, man. I'm good with it. I watch. I'll, I'll, I'll hold the camera. Shit. <laughs> right, dead man's been fucking getting in shape though with uh, going to the gym and stuff. I, I I have I there was a, there was a picture of me taken the other day and I was like uh, and it was put up and I was like wait that's me from behind I'm like I actually look like a <laughs> I actually look like a one and not a zero anymore like what the fuck <laughs> right like you're in, you're finally uh, in a shape that is not round <laughs> right I just need to get rid of the moobs dude so that I don't look weird wearing a vest because I'm already large and <laughs> you know you like gotta wearing, build, you gotta build the pecs bro. I, that's what I'm. That's what I'm working on. I, I went to the gym today. Ow, like, well, because like for the video that's going to be posted up tomorrow, I fucked up my shoulder like really bad at work uh, trying to haul 
a, a thousand pound engine through six inches of snow. And so I slipped and had to hold on for dear fucking life. I fucked up my left shoulder and I was just, I couldn't move it. Like I know in the show, like last week's show, I was doing this, but I also had like 1600 milligrams of Motrin like flowing <laughs> through my veins. <laughs> like this, this bottle was a lot heavier, you know, <laughs> make sure you change your socks, right? Yeah. Motrin you know, only works if you change your socks. Only if you change your socks and hydrate. <laughs> it's the only way it works. That's it. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I um, I fucked up my shoulder, so I had to literally skip like an enti- almost an entire week of of working out because I just did not want to risk it. I didn't want to, you know, go into the gym and then have that one click. <laughs> <laughs> All around me are familiar. <laughs> you know, <dude. laughs> Let me ask you how you are. You just say you're okay. <laughs> You know, like that's that's exactly what I was afraid of, dude. Like that's exactly what I was afraid of, was just uh, just fucking just hearing a click, (laughs) and just just, (laughs) okay. That was loud as hell, dude. Was it? Was it? Sorry. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, the, the other mic that I have that I bought from Gibby, like, I don't know why it just doesn't jive with StreamYard. Like, I did hmm. the playback and I did the listen, and it just doesn't jive with StreamYard. And I don't know why. Makes so sense. I, so I put, yeah, I put my trusty pod mic on. Yeah. And with my pod oh, we're going to drive Gibby insane. Just relax. There we go. Unwind after a hard work. Keep you just through something against the wall. <laughs> what do I? What do I got? That's like. What do I got? I guess no. Never mind. Anyways, so yeah, let's go ahead and because uh, this is going to be a semi-long, a semi-long show. We did promise part one and two today, so yeah. we are going to talk about the history of video games. And uh uh-huh. part one was 30 seconds long and part two was only 15 minutes long. <laughs> gotcha. Yes. But anyways. Um oh, man. So it all started with that weird squiggly line game. I, I'm, I'm really literally <laughs> trying to bring it up. Hold on a sec here. I don't even know what that fuck is. Oh, That's not it. <laughs> all right, hang on. I didn't have time to cook an actual dinner because in the podunk town I live in, if it's not five minutes away, it's an hour away. And of course, what I really need is an hour away. So, uh, yeah, just made it. All right. So let's take, a, let's, uh, let's just go, let's just go through this. Ooh, so what is that? Well, let, 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 let's, let's, let's start off by saying, uh, Let's start off by saying video games have, have not been a new concept. They're not a new concept. They've been around since the Caveman early times. well, the early 1950s. More or less, there was some form of interactive digital media. And in that interactive digital media, we had people that were willing to make games with it. Uh, like, like Ray Roberts said, the squiggly line thing was actually just an oscilloscope that you bought off a machine and all you had to do was just match up the lines. And you I actually just... don't have any cherry coke, Mike Smith. Oh, you finished it. Well, wow. yeah. Um so there was there was uh there was just this weird this weird niche at the very beginning of video games where it was just an interactive digital experience. That's yeah. it. And uh so what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna run through like some of the most early iterations, we're going to look up some pictures of stuff and we're going to talk about just how much video games have progressed and what impact they've had on, on society, if any at all. How we came so far in video games and then Fortnite. And then Fortnite, yeah. So uh, let's talk about the early days. It says here, though video games are founded today are found today in homes worldwide, they actually got their start in the research labs of a scientist. In 1952, a British professor, A.S. Douglas, created OXO, uh, also known as Knots and Crosses or Tic-Tac-Toe, as part of his doctoral dissertation at the University of Cambridge. In 58, what the fuck was that? In 58, 
uh, Higginbotham created Tennis 4.2 on a large analog computer and connected an oscilloscope screen for the annual Visitor's Day in uh, Brookhaven National Laboratory in Upton, New York. And that's what I, that's what Gerbert Arbor was talking about, Tennis for Two. Let's, let's take a look at that. Yeah, so fucking exciting. This was it. Yep. It was, it was, it was an oscilloscope that they, that they hooked up. End of story. This was it, Tennis for Two. <laughs> this was the controller's. And yep. I believe they still have a working version of this, right? Am I, am I, am I correct, Dre Robert? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because um, so, I actually remember seeing like a video, like an HD video of world's first video game. Yeah. So if, if you notice, like there's just one little arc and you bat it back and forth with the button uh, that we saw earlier. Like that. that's all it is. It's just boop, boop, boop. Yeah, there's a picture there. Right here second too. row down, second in from the left. Shows how yeah. the controller is held. <laughs> and all you do is rotate the oscilloscope and push the button. Turn the potentiometer and... That's it. That's it. Good times. Let's see if we, can, let's see if we got any videos. Uh, oh, there it is. Yep. Look at that. That was Tennis for Two. It's 1958. <laughs> that is the very first video game. Imagine that shit. Honestly, I wouldn't mind playing that, though. That looks like it'd be really good for my ADHD. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just an oscilloscope with a one button. Fuck, mm -hmm. fuck, 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 fuck. Have, <laughs> have both controllers. Control the potentiometer with my pinkies and then just click, click. Click, click. Damn, I lost to me. <laughs> well, I guess I owe myself some pizza rolls. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. In 1962, Steve Russell at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, otherwise known as MI fucking T, invented Space War, a computer a computer based space combat video game for the PDP, the programmed data processor one. This was this thing was gigantic. In case you guys are wondering, this was not a small this was not a desktop computer. The PDP-1 uh, was... Hold on. Let me see if I can... Um, this was... Hold on. Let me see here. This was the PDP-1. This big fucking thing right yeah. here was the PDP-1. It wasn't this thing. That's a typewriter. Uh, this is an oscilloscope. This is also another measuring device. But this right here, this big fucker, is the PDP-1. And this is what... Uh, it's about Space the size War. of three refrigerators. It's about the size of a very large refrigerator, yeah. Do you Mike think Smith the guy's <laughs> wife is complaining about him playing it? Probably. You have no idea like how much this has been like a literal problem. And, like... <laughs> There was actually there was actually a, a an article written I think in the in the in, in the seventies I think in the late seventies uh, over a divorce that happened because of a game of pong between a husband and a wife that had been married for like forty years and the <laughs> wife the wife or the husband lost to the wife one of them lost to the other one and they were literally like fuck you I want a divorce. <laughs> The size of Carmen three refrigerators. Hey man, we're down with it. <laughs> I don't want to drop my knives. Stop. All right. In 1967, uh, <laughs> as Sanderson's associates, led by Ralph Bear, invented a prototype multiplayer multi-program video game system that could be called the Brown Box. Now, the Brown Box was not an overseas thing this this was actually kind of local and was kind of based off of several other pieces of technology and it was actually i believe I, I think the first patents were held by magnavox and not by atari or anything else like that so that's actually a really interesting fact uh yeah. 
Bear, who's sometimes referred to as the father of video games, li- licensed his shit to Magnavox. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was the Odyssey. It was the Odyssey, and it was in 1972. And this thing was, uh, for all intents and purposes, just uh, uh, it, it was revolutionary, right? It was, it was, it was goddamn terrible. Don't get me wrong; it was fucking <laughs> horrible. Uh, like this fucking thing was goddamn terrible. To get these cartridges to work, you had to press in the numbers. This is how mostly you played the game. Yes, you did have offshoots of the single and uh, the single. Dude, I think I've seen one of those in my grandpa's attic. Dude, you can make some money if, if it still works. If it still this works, is- I'm gonna fucking play it. Uh, so this is this is the console, and this is the buttons. And you may recognize those uh, as early Atari like models. Atari got it from uh, Magnavox. So you would put the thing in, you would put the 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 cartridge in, and the way they got away with a lot of this, uh, especially back in the 70s, was not to market this as video games, but as a fucking calculator, as you can see here. Look. <laughs> look, this is, I'm being completely serious. It reminds me of, like, my Apple IIe. I yeah. All these video games, but they were educational aids. Yeah. So the Odyssey was just, uh, it, it, was, it was a terrible fucking system. Uh, it didn't, it was, wow, 205 bucks. It, it did not do much. Uh, it was very limited in its capacity and very, very much what it could do. However, this was essentially the very first home console and video game. And honestly, a lot of them still survive to this day. Uh, well, they're all built like tanks back then. Not necessarily that they were built with tanks. It's what they were built out of. Like it, it, it wasn't PVC. fucking aluminum and vacuum tubes. <laughs> like yeah, it wasn't because that was turned. Plastic. That was the new technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- this was ABS plastic that was way back in the fucking day. This was the shit that you know when when your when your uh twenty two inch CRT TV fell to the ground, no. and nothing <laughs> broke. That was because it was PVT plastic. <laughs> it was just like. Ugh. All right, pick me back up. Right. Uh, that was fun. <laughs> that was great, yeah. <laughs> One of Odyssey's 28 games was his, was the inspiration for Atari's Pong. Like I just said, Atari ripped off a lot from Magnavox. Uh, At least we know you're not full of shit. What do you mean? Well, you say something, and then we read it later in the article. At least you know you're not full of shit. Oh, I know, right? Like, it's weird. I wasn't, because, I, like, I have to look. I, like, this is my camera. This is where my camera is. But you guys are over there, so <laughs> I can't I can't read and talk to you guys at the same time because I have to keep it on the channel and on and on uh, Grave Robber, so I can't read ahead or anything. Uh, so um, in 1975, Atari released a home version of Pong, uh, which was as successful as its arcade counterpart, actually more so. Uh, Pong Pong was was bringing in. I think a lot of a, a lot of money in quarters. However, was bringing in almost three times that in just home sales because it would be it would be gifted or bought, and it was just nuts. Especially at the time it came out, it came out around Christmas. I, I want to say it was like October that year, and it sold fucking gangbusters, and so it just brought in a lot, a lot, a lot of shit. But what's funny, even back then, was uh, intellectual properties. Uh, and we're going to get to that in a second with like the console wars and stuff like that. Intellectual properties were just being out there, so a lot of fucking people got sued. And uh, it's really funny because Pong, two lines or three lines in a little white ball, caused <laughs> <laughs> millions of dollars of of, of aggravation. So let's let's look at this. Uh, along with Sanders Associates, Magnavox would eventually sue Atari for copyright. What the fuck? Uh, it's infringement. Atari <laughs> settlement became an Odyssey licensee over the next twenty years. Magnavox went on to win more than a hundred million dollars in copyright li- lawsuits related to Odyssey and its video game patents. All right, I'm going to stop like <laughs> waxing philosophical here because I'm just repeating myself at this point. Right. 
Oh my god. In 1977, the Atari 2600, also known as the video computer system, uh, a home console that featured joysticks and interchangeable game cartridges that multi uh, that played multicolored games, effectively kicking off the second generation of video game consoles. Uh, the video game uh, industry had a few notable milestones in the 1970s and 1980s. Now, including ET. <laughs> <laughs> The Atari 2600, the, 20, the Atari 5200, and the Atari Ultra were all terrible goddamn consoles. They were fucking horrible because this is actually what caused the great video game crash in the 70s and 80s. If you don't know what happened, uh, a quick a quick history lesson is that the video game market became so saturated and there was so few people actually buying licenses or getting licenses from video game companies that... You couldn't throw a fucking, you couldn't throw a rock without hitting a mini, a, a video game manufacturer. So the market itself literally crashed. Everything became worthless. Huh. So Space Invaders, 1978, Activision, now owned by Xbox, <laughs> 1979. <Right. laughs> uh, introduction of a Puckman. It, this was actually going to be Puckman. Because mm -hmm. of the shape, but the Japanese guys and the the American guys got together and went. You know what they're gonna do, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna scrape a little bit with you know, their keys. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That was literally <laughs> the conversation. That was literally the, they were like, it's like the Japanese guys were like, it's a puck man. You want to bring that game to America, Puck Man? It's a what? And no, we we heard it. We heard it. I mean, as, as soon as we said, Puck it, we Man, it. did they even think about this? I, I, I <laughs> we, I heard it. I heard it. <sighs> sorry, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, we need to no, think I'm... about this video game, okay? It needs to be able to like have a piece of wildlife named after it later. <laughs> just imagine, just imagine, uh, <laughs> just imagine the guy with a cold trying to talk, and that's how they came up with the name. Damn, Mike Smith is trapping in the old traumas. Spicy Fucking nostalgia. Nice. Good for you, bud. <laughs> good job. Oh, no, Tari was go. good. Mom bought Pac Man. First time I've seen her with something more than her pipe. Hey, man, as long as it distracted her, it's a good thing. If she acknowledged your existence without burning you with something, it's a good thing. <laughs> I was seven, so memory could be clouded. Or not. It could be just gray skies. With a touch of gray, I will survive. Anyways, uh, Nintendo's creation of Donkey Kong also introduced Mario, known yep. as Jumpman. Uh, and Microsoft released its very first flight simulator, which was... <laughs> but still better than E.T. on Atari. Yeah. The video game crash. I, I'm really gonna I'm really I haven't read this. I just pulled this up before the show. I haven't read this. <laughs> In nineteen eighty three, the North American video game industry oh experienced like a major Huh? Go for it. You sound like one of those eighties announcers. In 1983, the North American video game industry experienced a major crash due to a number of factors, including an oversaturated game console market, competition from computer gaming, and a surplus of overhyped low-quality games such as the infamous E.T., an Atari game based on the movie... Eponymous and often considered the worst game ever created. Lasting a couple of years, the crash led to the bankruptcy of several home computer and video game console companies. The Fitness Gram Pacer Test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity fitness test that gradually gets more difficult as you move along. The video game home industry began to recover in 1985 with the Nintendo Entertainment System, or right, NES. Was. Let's talk about this. Called the Famicom in Japan, came to the United States. The NES had improved 8-bit graphics, color sound, and gameplay over previous models. Now, this is cool. All of the original Mario Brothers game, the Super Mario Brothers game, I want you to try to guess how big the file was. 
Uh, smaller than an icon on your desktop. I want I'm like <laughs> take, take take a guess at at, at, at at size. Four megabytes. All right. <laughs> Winner gets a bag of fucking pork rinds. What's your guess, Dead Man? I'm gonna guess less less than a megabyte. All right. One dollar, Bob. One dollar, Bob. <laughs> Uh, five hundred and one dollars, bitch. <laughs> Gotta be so hard not to slap somebody. <laughs> I get pork rinds. Yeah, let me see. Thirty-two kilobytes. Ah! That was it. Okay. It was 32 kilobytes. Your Brave Robber was right. There, there, There is more in the fucking icon <laughs> in your desktop right now than the entirety of Super Mario Brothers in a 1985 Nintendo <laughs> Entertainment System. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's about like what three punctuations <laughs> now on a computer? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> oh my I, god, dude! I've sent text messages that have more fucking memory than that, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So, oh man, you have to you have to imagine how how advanced Nintendo became to go from ET to go from like uh, Pitfall and stuff like that. Yo, All Pitfall the was way- the shit though. Pitfall was the shit. Pitfall 3D was even better. Uh, to go from literally tanks, oh, remember fucking tanks? Dog. Yes, the, the little like squares with the fucking pentagrams or yeah, pen, pentagons. Yeah, on yeah. Them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then that we fucking get, game. and then we get all the way to fucking Super Mario Brothers in 1985. Wow, that came out really weird. Super you Mario started, Brothers. Yeah, you <laughs> Super Mario. Super Mario Brothers. You want to come over and play some Mario? Want to play some Mario? Okay, who brought the dog? (laughs) Okay, who brought the dog? (laughs) Anyway, Jesus, don't get me don't get me off for the fucking tangent. That game was awful too for the Atari. That game was terrible too for the last Atari console. There was an actual Ghostbusters game. It was it was not awful. Nintendo, a Japanese company that began as a playing card manufacturer in mm-hmm. 1889, and they, they produced some really cool cards. Have you ever I seen actually them? have a set on my Amazon wish list right there. Ba boom! Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. N- Nintendo, yeah, Nintendo playing cards. Oh no, like the original cards of what they were called. They're kind of cool though. Uh let's see. 14 bucks on Amazon if you guys are interested. And get a Hana deck of Fuda. Nintendo playing cards. Did you know they make black toilet paper? Yes. And black paper towels. I'm gonna put that shit in my new. That apartment. one I didn't know. <laughs> that one I didn't know. Yeah, they make black paper towels. I'm like, oh hell yeah, that's gonna look awesome. So in these my are kitchen. Hanafuna cards. These cards are beautiful. They would like make some you, really cool tattoos, honestly. Yeah, th- oh, that's what I was about to say. Like when you want to mm. talk about traditional like tattoos and where this art, that traditional art came from, they came from Hanafuda cards, and they are pronounced. It is pronounced weird. It's Hanafuda. Like Hannah's so, food. Yeah, yeah. And then throw an ah at the end of it just for some attitude. Just for Japanese stuff. You know, yeah. like waifu. <laughs> waifu. Oops, I almost uh, sent the wa- wrong waifu, stuff. To waifu, is, uh, waifu is an American thing. Yeah. I uh, almost sent you the wrong stuff. I was about to... I was going to order your pork rinds, but first I was ordering... Uh, fucking lenses for my welding hood and sexy anime girl sticker bombs. <laughs> I almost accidentally sent that shit to you. 
None of it I would have minded. None of it I would have been like, oh no. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, Not much oh. use for these lenses, but uh I'll tape them to something. <laughs> I'll find a place for the sticker bombs. <laughs> oh man. Oh my god, but anyways, um, so yeah, hand the full of the card. So if you really want to get like if if you have somebody in your life, and this is this is a cool just thing if you have somebody in your life that has a lot of shit you don't know what to get them and their history buff trust me get them some hanafuda cards right they will lose their shit i'm I'm not even joking so many people know about them so many people forget about them because of the name is so funky uh it is uh what what shade lens do you prefer um i use an auto tint but i have it set to a 13 shade for right now because i do uh aluminum welding and that burns bright as you can tell by how weirdly faded my shirt is you can see where the welding hood rests and then the rest of the shirt fades out (laughs) yeah (laughs) there's a nice dark spot where the hood rests when i'm welding and then the shirt's faded out this shirt is only about like a month old so that's why, yeah, that's why I, I weld my shit from Amazon, dude. I weld really dark on my shade because that shit burns bright. If I turn it down to like a nine shade, then like my eyes are sore at the end of the day. Just come out looking like that Tom and Jerry cartoon. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Do you smoke weed today? No, I'm a welder. No. Oh, my cornea's itch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? You close your so, eyes and do the fucking thumb thing. <laughs> this is when quality of video games began to not only skyrocket but literally everybody else had to step up their game and those that did not step up their game died no pun intended uh actually yeah pun intended <laughs> because you did have uh you did have Things that were getting stupid complicated, like the Atari, the Atari add-ons and stuff like that. You had, uh, uh, you had like Famicom ripoffs, and you had all this other stuff. But Nintendo was one of the first ones that did something super, super smart. Hell uh, yeah! When Atari and, and several other of these manufacturers were just letting anybody develop games for their shit, like. Did, could you program a cartridge? Could you program a game? Then you can make it and you could just sell it. You didn't have to pay any licensing fees to anybody. You didn't have to pay, you didn't have to pay Atari or 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 um fucking Odyssey or any of the Magnavox, none of those guys. All you had to do was make your game and put it on shelves. That's you know, it. here's a here's a weird question. What's up? So the NES was groundbreaking eight bit graphics. What were the graphics? before honestly they were 8-bit however it was not the way it was presented 8-bit processing is not the same as 8-bit uh rendered Mm. so this is uh what the nintendo was was 8-bit processing 8-bit rendered is what we got from atari and uh famicom and odyssey and magnavox so uh (laughs) 8-bit rendered is oh look we can make more than one fucking color so it's cool. like playing a PS2 on a 4K TV. It's 4K so, rendered, okay, so. but it's PS2 processed. Uh, <laughs> me, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're you're close. Because, um, like I said, you know, you're you're the guy with the knowledge. I'm the guy that asks the questions. <laughs> so this is how. So when when um. <laughs> When they Hail figured Sagan. out, uh, Hail Sagan. When they figured out they could do more than one color, what they started doing was they didn't they didn't design games in a three D model. What they did was they took graph paper, mm-hmm. they took graph paper and they laid it down and said, "Well, we can make more than one color. What's to stop us from overlaying a grid that we're already doing, but shrinking those blocks?" And individually coloring those blocks, we can get something completely different. So this is what this is the, some of the original graph paper designs yeah. that they would do, which is also cool because in order to save like programming time and stuff, using the graphs and blocks, 
uh I, there's there's i think an image somewhere where it shows like how they recycled the patterns like if you look at like uh the goomba and how it's shaped and you look at how mario stands it's just recycled but with different colors mm -hmm. <clears throat> so th this is uh this is of course pixel or block art but like this is the this is the graph paper and some of the original stuff i, I believe this is in a museum dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> did they so, know like did they intend for us to break through that top row of bricks and yes. just fucking skip everything <laughs> yes look it even says right here look oh there's actually a, there little, you go. a little note there's a little note right here all of this stuff that you all, all like all the all the game breaking hacks and stuff like that except for the complete jump which is a, a fluke uh was all designed it was all designed see look oh yeah yeah that's exactly what it says yeah <laughs> <laughs> Fuck up. I'm, I'm pointing more so at the notes on the on the levels themselves but, but see and then like where the spaces are in the graph paper like that's the height yeah you know of like mario right there and when he's it, in his jump punch you know yeah but if you also take a look at this look, look at like the pipes here Look at how well they're colored, dude. They were specific, man. They fucking shaded it. Look at the look at the 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 turtles, the troopers. <laughs> like the, the 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 coins. Yep. Centric basic, like the, like this this stuff is what was so fucking cool and genius about like the history of these video games. So when Nintendo started doing this and started mapping and bit mapping is what it's actually called, uh, bit mapping their video games, this stepped everything up. And so Nintendo and, and uh, the companies that started licensing through Nintendo, like I was saying, Nintendo was the first one to say, you can't make a Nintendo game. And all these other motherfuckers, all these manufacturers were like, but we got we got all these carts. <laughs> cool. You didn't pay us for the license, and you sure as fuck didn't ask us permission. What what the what the fuck is this? What 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 what, what is this? Um, Super hang on. That's that's um that's Colonel Custard's sexual revenge. Security. <laughs> yeah. Tase him. I the want him now? tased. The what now? That was uh, that was an actual <laughs> game. That was an actual game. I'm not joking. That was an actual game put out for the Atari. Colonel Custard's sexual revenge. I'm not joking. Good times. <laughs> And the uh, we should live stream a playthrough of it. <laughs> no, no, somebody got banned from Twitch for doing it. Um, All right, Patreon only. I'll do. I'll do it on Patreon. I'll do it on Patreon. I'm not going to do it live here. Uh, uh, so this was what was known as uh, as bit mapping, right? And so this is what started making video games way, way, way more exclusive and way harder to make, and thus. A lot of these uh, uh, third-party, fourth-party developers started dying, especially with Nintendo's practice of you don't pay us for the for the license, you don't make a Nintendo game, because everybody picked it up, and by everybody, I mean Sega, mm -hmm. and that was it. Sega was also <coughs> Sega's like, you know what? Fuck you, Mega Drive. It's yeah, thirty-two well, bits. Eat a dick, Nintendo. <laughs> it was more like it well, was, it was like, sixteen, but. Nintendo Entertainment System. Well, behold, the Sega Master System. <laughs> What's it do different? Not much. This one's black. <laughs> this one's black. <laughs> and that's all I got. <laughs> Act cool. Carmen is home with a pizza from Wilshire. Oh, hey, oh, Carmen. Shit. Welcome. So let's Welcome. go ahead. You've got mail. Welcome. You've got mail. That was weirdly really good. <laughs> uh, anyways. Hello, Clarice. Oh, stop. In 1989, Sega Master System came out, and it did fail in the beginning, 
to compete with Nintendo, mostly because Nintendo had already had a four-year jump on it. However, due to Sonic the Hedgehog... I'm literally just reiterating what's on the fucking screen. <laughs> due to Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, this became Mario's rival, and Nintendo and Sega loved it. Yeah, us fucking idiots, us fucking fanboys back in the 80s were fighting each other over who was better, Sega or Nintendo or or Mario or Sonic. And Nintendo and Sega were both going like, it's good. This is good. This pleases me. This is it. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I like this. Oh, he's good. This is good. Nerd, nerds fighting. This is good. Uh <laughs> Weird because when we go back to like late eighties, early nineties, Nintendo was better for selection. But if we have to pick, if I had to pick between Mario and Sonic, I would much rather play Sonic. Much play rather Mario. play Sonic. Nah, Mario is boring as hell. It's not fast enough. That's fine. It's just, it's okay. That's okay. Sonic is. I mean, Sonic is like Mario, but he's on like fucking trucker speed, dude. Yeah, he's. <laughs> Then you get that weird, I always called it the vacuum cleaner noise, you know, when you yeah. start rolling really fast, it goes, Hold on, let me see if, uh, I just always felt like it sounded to me like a vacuum cleaner when I was a kid. Okay, I mean, you just hit him with a serious. Yeah! <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, so this this did start the video the console wars the official first console wars were in the late 80s late 80s early 90s and they lasted up until sega folded I, i'm not even i'm not even gonna pretend to, to, to bullshit like up <laughs> well until that sega console war lasted until sega folded otherwise the console wars are still happening i, I mean essentially yeah uh, there were things that would just always jump one ahead of the other. Street Fighter 2 did come out on both consoles and sort of Mortal Kombat. However, Mortal Kombat on, on Genesis had blood. Mortal Kombat on Nintendo didn't. I have Mortal Kombat on Sega Genesis. I prove this to you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to plug that shit in, dude, because I don't remember ever seeing blood on the home console. I have it on Sega Genesis. All right, hold on. Because I know Sega, the Aladdin game, Aladdin had a fucking sword, and everybody else just had to jump on their enemies and throw apples. Uh, what? Where? Where do you want me to go? Uh, YouTube. Sure. Or you want me to just uh? Uh, either way, I'm gonna fucking plug in my Genesis this weekend and see if it has fucking blood or not. Uh, go ahead. I said I will. All right, we'll, we'll go to YouTube. We'll go to YouTube. Hold on. What videos? Oh, can't play that. Your typing face is ridiculous. I know. Because you have like a normal face, and then when you type, you're like, "Well, I have to switch the brain to active <laughs> mode." <laughs> I have to put the brain in standby, all right? <laughs> all right, hold on, hold on. Uh, See, now he's thinking about it. I know. <laughs> uh, Did you accidentally leave your hand tie up? Is that why you're like, whoa? No, it was a that. song. It was a song. Oh, yeah, YouTube would have turned us off. Like, Yeah, instantly. yeah. Watermelon sugar stream has been suspended. <laughs> mm. All right. Uh, here we go. Oh my god, it's so bad. It's only in one channel in my headphones. How about for you? Uh, I got stereo. That is odd. <laughs> This all sounds familiar. Get over here. You want me to let it play or you want me to fast forward? Fast forward it.
Sonya got wrecked. Yeah, she did. She didn't even bleed. <laughs> well, they don't, they, don't, they don't bleed on the jump kicks. Fight. Why are they doing everything but that? There it is. Uh, that must be why, because it disappears. That's why I look, forget look, it. Look. This guy's a shitter with Johnny Cage. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, look, there's blood. There it is. Okay. It's fucking. I'm gonna They're plugging more, my Genesis. I'm gonna have more fucking pork rinds than I know what to do with at this point. Shit. I'm not. But I'm not sending you more pork rinds now. We didn't bet. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, You've already got one on the way. All right. You're supposed to be fucking gearing up to be Doom guy. I'm not gonna just be your fucking no, yeah, pork rind no. dealer, dude. Like today worked <laughs> out my today worked out my back so much. That's the one I got in my car to shoot my video. I w- I literally got in slump sideways. And that's how I filmed. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I had the phone too, and I was like, I, I'm the not everything's not this is this is correct. Like I even did it in the video. <laughs> uh, anyways, so Sega helped create the rating console, the video game rating console, otherwise known as the ESRB. Now, yes, uh, the Entertainment and that was Software Sega. Rating Board, uh-huh, and that was Sega. To help actually get past a lot of censors for what they were doing at the time. Because they did have racy games. They did have really violent anime games. They had Mortal Kombat. They had stuff like that that was coming out at the time. And so they were kind of like greasing the, the they palms had of people. fucking Doom. Well, so did SNES. Yeah. And arguably SNES version was much, much better. Oh, yeah. It wasn't until Doom hit the Sega 32X that it actually made a big difference. Yeah. Uh, so we're not going to talk about the Street Fighter or the Super Mario Brothers movies because holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, for a little while, everything was stagnated as far as the home consoles was concerned, but then all of arcade started just rapidly evolving, and this was due to a lot of things being developed and implemented at the time, one of them being. Uh, polygonal models instead of stand-in models like they did for Mortal Kombat. Because if yeah. you notice for Mortal Kombat, those were stand-in, those are real people with a little bit of Photoshop and not a lot of movement. It yeah. was actually just one, two, one, two, step, 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 step. And then you had yeah. polygonal stuff like... Like the N64, like Star Fox? Yeah. Oh, like or all GoldenEye? Dude, do you remember when GoldenEye was like badass graphics? <laughs> Remember when we were like, yes, it's so real. And you fucking karate chop motherfuckers. <laughs> what I'm specifically talking about, though, is Virtue Fighter. Remember that? Yes. I actually so, liked the Virtua Cop on the Sega Saturn or Sega Virtua CD. Was cool. That was no, dope. So it, was, it was Saturn. Yeah. Uh, so uh, like this was a really big development in, in the gaming industry was the ability to map polygons. And so. A lot of home systems started to stagnate because they just couldn't compete with arcades putting out Virtua Fighter, uh, mm-hmm. Tekken even, stuff like that where polygons were being mapped instead of staged, which is the House of the process. Dead. House of the Dead was a lot later, but I, I get I like <laughs> I like the energy. No, I do. So Sorry, I'm just like traveling way forward in time. I know, no, no, no. You're actually <laughs> right on topic because this is where we started moving to CDs. And the very first 32-bit system was the Saturn, uh, which was the Sega Saturn. Yes, I know the Sega CD was technically a 32-bit system, but it wasn't. It was actually a dual processor component. which Like the did... PlayStation? No. PlayStation was a single processor component, but it had oh. a GPU, SBU. Uh, That's it. Well, I knew no, it was similar, I, though, with like PlayStation with their it, processors. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah. I'll, I'll explain it in a minute, uh, but uh, lost my train of thought. Anyways, uh, so the Sega the Sega CD was terrible, fucking awful, god awful. And then it, they realized that they had to get move ahead because PlayStation, uh, Sony International Enterprises enters the game. A new fighter has entered the game, and. Started literally out the gate with the Sony PlayStation, which, which was, was a CD-based games. 
and only made it out of production because of Nintendo. Because Nintendo sold them a lot of plastic and a lot of spare yeah. parts. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. That's a fun fact, everyone. That's why Good. the play, the PS ones were gray. That's why the plastic was so rigid and hard, and it just like felt familiar in the hands, smelled very sim- like familiar out of the box, because it was Nintendo plastic. It was Nintendo ABS <laughs> plastic. Yeah, <laughs> that is that is a cool fact. Though. I love that. Um, while Sony had entered with the PS1, Nintendo went to the Nintendo 64. All of these arguably found massive success. But like I said, this was also due to the to the ability to map polygons. Sony had a massive success in it with stuff like Siphon Filter and yeah. with, uh, Metal Gear Solid. With Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot. All of these things were being accelerated at a very, very Dream high Raider. pace. How... Mm, <laughs> we need more oh, tunnels. Ah, <laughs> uh, God, just no, nothing can beat them triangle titties. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> what Nintendo did was what Nintendo has always done. They took something that was being used by the industry, broke it down to a miniature scale, and then rescaled the entire thing. Super Mario Brothers sixty four or Super Mario sixty four was a polygonal game that had been mapped to polygons on top of polygons Uh, like it's i heard guy dog i heard you're like cars we put a car in your car type bullshit (laughs) (laughs) what happened was that they broke the polygons down so much that they got a much smoother frame rate they got much smoother animation and they got much bigger maps with much less memory so Super Mario 64 looks so fucking good in comparison to GoldenEye, in comparison yeah. to Virtue Fighter, because they broke the polygons down and did yeah. what Nintendo always does. Yeah. And so this smaller was, lines make smoother lines. Like, yeah. And so once again, this just catapults the industry forward because now Sony, now Sega. Now even Xbox starts entering the fucking dimension of games, and they're all looking at at Super Mario 64 and uh, Rare Entertainment's Killer Instinct and going, Uh oh, and we can't forget about the, the electronic entertainment masterpiece, the Ocarina of Time. Fuck you. Uh... But everybody was sent no. Everybody was standing there. I will mute you. Everybody was standing around going, "How the fuck did they do that?" And Rare Entertainment was one of the first ones to do it. Not only with Donkey Kong Country on the Super oh, Nintendo Entertainment game. System, but all of this stuff was coming up from a one one really big source, and that was Rare Entertainment. So now we started having to fast forward. Not only the technology, but the way we develop games. Sony was the first one to go full fucking hog on this. They developed the, the developed the PlayStation Two, which started using up DVDs and these DVD drives and DVD systems. Remember, they were black on the bottom. Well, the PS One was black. The PS Two, PS Two, the PS Twos were silver on the bottom, but they had the PlayStation logo in the actual data lines. And the demo discs you got in the magazine were blue on the bottom. Trying to see. I went, why am I went? Hold on. All right, so you from the goddamn call. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. They weren't black. They were purple. Yeah, some of them were that weird blue color. Um, Most of them. <clears throat> I don't know. Like the early ones, yeah. Because like Metal Gear Solid Three Snake Eater, which really is a fucking masterpiece in video gaming, was a silver disc. Um, that's cool. Yeah. But so, no, some like when you look at underneath the PS2 discs, like the ones with the silver data lines, yeah. they actually have you froze one more like time. embossed to the place in the data line. It's fucking dope. But yeah, so uh, 
PlayStation Two was one of these. One of these uh, was something that Sony did to just literally shit on the entire industry. Not only did they actually put out games like Ico, which is one of the most incredible games ever. If you've never played it, I suggest you do. They started selling demo discs with their PlayStation magazine, which Sony Entertainment yeah. was putting out uh, once a month. Need for Speed Most Wanted is still one of my all-time favorite. It probably, yeah, it's probably one of my all-time favorite racing games. That's where uh, I first heard that damn song too. To the window, to the wall. <laughs> Did this red drop down my bowels? Yep. Oh, these bitches! Oh shit! I, I love how horrible. I love how horrible it sounded. Yeah, like, way back when. Uh, Bully was also on the PS2, but also Black, and I want to talk about Black for a second. You mean second. Battlefield 3's grandfather? I, Battlefield, <laughs> Battlefield's entire premise came from <laughs> fucking, this fucking game their entire existence yeah the destructible environments and interchangeable guns and all this other shit that was started by battlefield all came from black a seriously stupid goddamn game where literally well, the, the the tagline was the gun the guns are the stars of the game i mean siphon filter on the ps1 had That's partially funny. destructible environments that you could shoot out lights partially. and bust barrels and pipes yeah. and stuff break windows but nothing like black you could literally level oh no, yeah and, dude yeah. you could fucking blow out an entire wall <laughs> so uh dude, ssx tricky what yeah oh i'm on such a fucking nostalgia trip right now look at that right there yes so after sony after sony pretty much shit on the entire industry of course everybody's racing to catch up the dreamcast comes out the gamecube comes out and even now microsoft moves from home computers into the gaming console system and With this the is where release we started of the direct the xbox the microsoft xbox yeah they were gonna call it the direct xbox because it ran off direct x but they were <laughs> yeah like, i know why don't we just call it xbox it's easier instead of calling Actually, it the, D- <laughs> the dx box the dicks box no thanks we're not close. gonna do a puck man on this one <laughs> close <laughs> yeah right we saw the japanese guy exiting like we're not doing that yeah uh, <laughs> the dix box Mm-mm. what happened uh was the direct xbox direct x was not owned by microsoft at the time and so direct x said well, if you're gonna call it that hey and uh you can always look good in theater mode thank you uh Thanks. so maybe yeah, one day gonna, we'll actually be in a theater you know if you're gonna call it that we're, we're gonna need their cut so the guy in charge of the guy in charge of uh, Microsoft at the time, I think it was actually Bill Gates running the program, was like, "Well, I'm not going to pay you for shit. Cut off the direct, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> now it's just Xbox. How do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, shit. Fair enough. <laughs> we own Direct X. Well, I'm a god. I own Xbox." <laughs> Okay. I wrote the fucking program that you wrote the fucking program in. How do you like that? <laughs> right? You couldn't write your programs without my computers. Or programs. <laughs> Literally fucking DOS. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> what, so, what UI do you use to create your video games? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? What's your SDK? What's your SDK again? Tell me. Tell me. Where's your baseline? Hmm. Oh hmm. uh, God! Damn and it. one last question: What was your business name? I'm gonna write. Yeah, <laughs> right. Writing it down. <clears throat> Fucking you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> once again, we start. We start getting into a console war: the modern age of gaming, which is Microsoft 360 versus the Sony PlayStation. Why did Sega fall off? Well, namely because their software was so easily pirate, easily piratable. That- oh my God. Post, yeah dude for real when i was in like sales fell to nothing yes when i was in middle school all right i had this friend who had a dreamcast right like uh, sega's last dying attempt at survival in the home market right he had a dreamcast zero of his games were purchased all of them were on fucking cd minus r's and cd plus r's and and they, he had all the shit too. He had like arcade games. He had the gun and stuff. You know, he had like House of the Bread, um, 
House of the Dead 3 and fucking every Sega arcade game that was ever made yeah. paid for zero of them because he had yeah. an internet connection. <laughs> yes, all, all you had to do was go to uh all you had to do was go to your like your local game rental store, get it if you had a if you had a fucking yeah. CDR or CDRW, you yeah. could literally copy your fucking games for a dollar. Go back to the just video game like store. burning a CD. Yeah, just <laughs> go back to the video game store, take it back. Oh, this one didn't work. Let me just grab this one. Take it yeah, back. There was wash a rinse, blockbuster repeat. about three miles down the road. Like, yeah, wash, rinse, repeat, dude. Like it was that easy. Yeah. And so Sega's revenue post post console sales fell to absolutely fucking zero. Not to mention that they had so many accessories for the for the Sega uh, Dreamcast that did yeah. not make it to the end to the United States. That so much of the Dreamcast was essentially fucking useless. Yeah, but but to, to Sony's credit, uh, to Sega's credit, they did set up the very first online multiplayer systems and the first uh, servers to be used in online gaming. That was Sega. Sega did that first. Uh, a lot of people like to say Sony PlayStation Two did it. Bullshit. Sega had them beat. So. Mm. Thank your multiplayer online for anything you do, whether it be mobile, whether it be computer or console. You thank Sega for that. They did that because they knew that in Japan, all the, the internet was blowing up and was being used more and more and more uh, for online gaming. Uh, and it wasn't just uh, it wasn't just PCs because PCs were being outsold by consoles at the time. So this is what happened like like they were like okay well let's let's make it so this thing can actually go online and yeah. they can play and that was sega sega did that so yeah xbox and sony have sega to think uh you could have played sonic on dial-up yeah yeah i mean i played metal gear solid 3 on dial-up mm -hmm. I, I had to get this fucking attachment for my ps2 it was like 60 dollars though and it screwed into the fucking back uh, and I had to plug the phone cable into it. Yep. And nobody was ever online, but I had it. <laughs> yeah. Woo. So uh once again, every everything starts fast forwarding. We got the Xbox 360, we got the PlayStation 3, then we got uh the PlayStation 3 Pro, the Xbox 360 Slim, so on and so forth. But Nintendo once again just does what Nintendo does and releases the fucking Wii. With this shit little control. Oh, these, but we skipped the GameCube. Things. No, I didn't. I talked about the GameCube. When did you talk about GameCube? Earlier. Mike, did Dead Man talk about GameCube? Yes. Because if we had talked... Drive, when I was talking about this... You drive mentioned systems. GameCube. Maybe. Because if we had talked okay. about GameCube, I would have talked about how dope it was that Nintendo was like, this is our shit. And, oh, by the way, we're going to make a thing that plugs into it where you can play your Game Boy games on your TV. See, Mike, says, that was Mike says yes. Mike says yes. I may have zoned out. Fucker. It's uh, fucking possible, dude. It is. <laughs> uh, the Wii did what Nintendo does best. It crushed everybody and yeah. everything with its nostalgic games with its throwbacks with its with its back library and online library the and wii, its motion controllers the wii decimated the xbox and the fucking playstation and everything else that came at the time it was there's it, like it just, nobody that doesn't remember those two japanese guys you know we I was telling you i love her when he said that there you go Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Those creepy commercials of guys just showing up at our home with this with the Wemo. <laughs> we would like to play. <laughs> the fuck is this? Angle. Get the camera. Camera or gun? Gun. <laughs> <laughs> or the gun camera, like from the bodyguard. That's yeah, sure. <laughs> cool. Uh. So. Uh, of course. Um. Uh, what helped a lot of what helped a lot of the Wii sales, believe it or not, uh, like Apu, yeah, uh, <laughs> the Wii Fit, 
uh, what yeah was uh, that they bought them for nursing homes and retirement homes and they started using them for physical therapy and physical uh, rehabilitation and that actually was a huge huge boost to Nintendo's not only not only image but sales records yeah. I actually Jesus think that made it. national news, you it know. It says it right there. Yep. I think that actually made national news though, too. It did. It did. Like it did. Yeah. Like why? What I'm not even reading this. All right. I'm looking at you. <laughs> I'm not even reading this. It's getting <laughs> annoying, dude. You're just kind of a big nerd. I am. Oh, I'm an encyclopedia fucking idiot. Anyways. The yep. only time, uh, the only time that Nintendo has ever failed, and the, okay, so it's right here, was the Wii U. The Wii U was universally panned. It was too big. It was too bulky. It had zero fucking uh, accordance to what was going on at the time, which was 1080p gaming, and the online functionality of it was awful. The library was gone. Backwards compatibility was gone, and it just could not contend with the kitty, X kitty. with the X Bone and the PlayStation Four. Kitty, kitty. <laughs> but Come here, Mike. Cat. Mike's doing a welfare check. Come here, kitty. Hop up. <laughs> I have Kit some Kat. <laughs> Kit Kat. Come here. She's being a bitch because she hasn't got fed yet. <sighs> so. Uh, I she think, literally, I said, "Come here." She literally looked at me and goes, and then walks away. <laughs> so the Wii U had the shortest lifespan of any console it's ever released from 2012 to 2017. That's only five years. We're five years into the Nintendo Switch, and it's only had its half life. So yeah, I'm honestly considering getting a fucking switch. I love this thing. That way I can play video games in bed instead of watching TikToks. That's what I do. That's, that's, <laughs> why, I, that's why I have it charging. Like I'm, uh, I, I don't know. I might stop by the pawn shop and see if they have any like switch lights or something. Yeah, and of course, uh, so I can play Metroid. Playing fucking Breath of the Wild. Oh my god! At least yeah. it's a good one. <laughs> I'm not like <laughs> Zelda 2. <laughs> yeah, well, Zelda 2 was a tragedy in itself. Anyways, uh, so far, the console wars have been reignited by Sony and Microsoft, and that's exactly where we are. And this, uh, this new generation of consoles and this new generation of gaming has gone very much into the space of online and virtual gaming. Uh, gone are the days of, are they like a Game Boy? Yes, actually. Gone are the days of single player games for the sake of single player games. So much yeah. of it is online. So much of it has to be online for updates and stuff like that or patches. But, well, I can but, understand single player games that need online for updates yeah. and patches, but shit like Battlefield, where they don't even make a fucking campaign mode, like they just quit trying anymore. Yeah. Like, I'm really pissed that I, that I fucking paid full price for a fucking game that's not even there. I mean... Like, so, everybody that bought Black Ops 4, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> trying to see if I can... Black Ops 4, you get zombies, multiplayer, and our version of Battle Royale. So these I are forget what the, it was called. These are some of the, These are some of the games I have right now. Uh, Aliens Fireteam, Astroneer, Battlefield 2042, Depth, uh, Doki Doki, this is not what it looks like, Far Cry 6, <laughs> Define Love or Die Try, remember I told you about this one? Yeah, That's I haven't the one started I told you it about yet. That. Yeah, but There's I'm not Ghost working Busters, tomorrow, so I'll probably play Golf it. with Friends, so all, all of these, all of these are... What's Mirror? Uh, that's the hentai game. Uh, <laughs> all of these are uh, <laughs> online, except for, uh, well, most of them are. Depth is online. This one's not. 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 Um, so most of this is what you're looking at in the library is going to be in the modern day gamer. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of online games and some some solo games to have fun with, and which is what I uh, like to do. 
Yeah, if I go through my library, I have a mostly solo games. Like I but, usually just play solo. Like I, what I can read now, Battlefield Three, Battlefield Four, Battlefield Twenty Forty Two, Minecraft, uh, Fallout Four, Skyrim, Red Dead Redemption, Black Ops One, Two, and Three, and then like on my Steam, I've got PC Builder Simulator. <laughs> Uh, world of guns and find love or die trying i don't like to play with people online there's like two three people i'll play with but um what's funny is that nintendo once again has just killed the game and the switch is still right now reigning supreme i know i know uh playstation 5 is, is 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 touting their numbers and xbox series x is touting their numbers but the fucking switch the switch this little we could right honestly here. do an entire episode on handheld gaming, dude. Is my hand really that goddamn big? Oh my god, there it is. <laughs> okay, I, I look like a freak there first. I was like, I was like, looks like a fucking phone in my hand, dude. Like, no, yeah, just putting that down. Here's, here's dead man, the switch. <laughs> look, just look at my iPhone. My iPhone, like, my Samsung, <laughs> I, I, the whole fucking switch in my hand. Oh, it's actually about the same scale. Yeah, that's what I mean, dude. Like the whole <laughs> fucking switch is in my hand. What a creeper! Look. Yeah, no, like legit. That's like the same scale. <laughs> Jesus fuck! <laughs> oh, should have so been a wrestler. This, so the switch. <laughs> <laughs> like switch. Vanna White, the switch is still reigning supreme. <laughs> so, uh, if we that's because PSP we, fucked around too long and they, they thought discs was a thing. Well, <laughs> uh, you have heard, uh, short people have large hands. Uh, Grave Robber does have large hands, um, they're wide, they're not long. Look at these fucking sausage fingers, man. That's what I mean. But in these the are end, the only sausage fingers that matter right here. Oh god! Uh, in the end, <laughs> what we're trying to say is that despite, even though we have this history of gaming, what we also have is a history of success, and honestly, a history of camaraderie, dude. Like, and the all the way back to arcade gaming and shit, it yeah. brought people together. You know, you made friends. You you met people you got to compete you got noticed and then finally the non-athletic guys were the ones that were getting their fucking praise instead of oh i played fucking running back for the high school football team and lettered on my sophomore year nobody nobody cares, cares anymore jeff <laughs> no one cares bro how quick can you beat mario yeah fucker huh hmm? have you beaten shao Kahn? what's the Which highest is? level you got to on tetris Right? Fucking where <laughs> where's your goddamn high score? Have you survived Pac-Man so long that you crashed the game? <laughs> Did you get bikini Samus? Yes. I don't think you did. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, um, or my personal favorite fucking accolade that I just earned like maybe two and a half years ago. Hmm. Did you beat? Contra. Yeah, that that literally took me. I'm not even joking. <laughs> that literally took me two entire days to beat my childhood. I'm not kidding you. Yeah, it took me two. Or it took me 48 hours straight of playing that game. That might be why I have rage issues. Yeah, I had to Konami code it for like an entire day just so I could learn the patterns of the enemies and their shots. Oh like, my god. <sighs> <sighs> But oh my god but then when i beat it first thing i did called my dad <laughs> dad right. i beat contra <laughs> and uh we have a we have a long-standing history of good games will always trump you know uh the, the, the most fanciful bullshit bells and whistles out there fucking breath of the wild is just a zelda game with an open world to it yeah and i have put in I don't know how many hours. And honestly, I the game I could probably out. play 
forever, like every day. Huh. Metal Gear Solid Four: Guns of the Patriots. Knew it. Oh, dude! Cinematic, amazing storyline is actually better than most of his other stories. <laughs> like, there's so much shit you can do. It's it's still not open world, but it doesn't feel like as confined, like chess map as you know say metal gear solid or metal gear solid 2 you know but the actual open worlds like metal gear 5 and fucking survive we don't talk about survive no they didn't work too well you know because like metal gear solid you can't have free roam it's just no it you lose the vibe so yeah, so that that's your entire history of video games, all the way back from an oscilloscope to current generations of online, three D mapped, uh, polygon crushed games. Yes, and Nintendo is still king. They still do the thing, king. man. Mm-hmm. Nintendo is still king. There's a reason they've been around since the fucking eighteen hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> for real dude well that and plus i'm sure there's still old people out there that call anything that's a video game oh a is nintendo. that your new nintendo yeah like you talk about fucking brand recognition <laughs> great grandma exactly. has had you know great grandma has had dementia for 27 years but she knows the fucking word well, nintendo, she knows nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> but uh, you know i used to have the one that had the glove oh grandma wow. you still got the glove Grandma, where is it? Grandma, give me the fucking power glove. Can I have the glove? I want to reenact the whiz. <laughs> it's so bad. Anyways. <laughs> uh, that's going to do it for our education for Friday. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys joined us along and learned something today. I know Grave Robber has. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're going to get the fuck out of here. Uh, we will see you on Sunday. We're going to have another formatted show. We might have a guest on. I'm not sure, but we'll find out in time. So and we'll try to make said, sure that everybody has time to watch the Super Bowl. I'm not I, gonna, I, but I'm you not know. Gonna. But we're gonna get out of here. So see you later, folks.